Robert Johnson didn't use a flat pick. He used his thumb and his fingers to create the music that he played and the licks and the phrases. But we're flat pickers, and so what we're trying to do is incorporate his style in with our style. And so I want to give you a couple examples, simple things that'll help you kind of hone the skill of using this other finger while you're playing. And uh, let's do it in the key of G. This is going to be a simple exercise. And we're going to use two strings that are close together. And we're going to heartbeat one of them. Like that. So you have to get that down and get that in your head and get it to where it's fluid. And it's easy to do. You just got to practice on it. And this is going to help you. So we're going to grab... We're going to grab this fret, third fret, second string, and I'm going to take my middle finger and I'm going to go. With this style, using your other finger, playing lead along with the rhythm, I'm taking my middle finger and I'm hitting the second string. I'm going to pull up on it. I'm going to pluck it like that. And so I'm going to keep my pick fingers. hit the same time the other one does, but they only come in every now and then. They don't play all the time. And I'm going two strings at a time. I'm on the third and the second string. And just then I switch to the fourth and the third string. And I just, I'm taking the same thing and switching it back and forth like that. Okay, traditionally, bluegrass guitar, you would be posting or you'd be up a little bit, but on the blues here, we're going to be laying, laying the palm of the hand or the edge of the palm of the hand on the strings to muffle it a little bit to get kind of the uh, sound that we're after. <laughs> So I'm laying that on the strings right there as a bass, and I'm, I'm palming it, and I'm, my hand is real close to the strings. I'm almost like laying it down on top of the strings. And so I'm grabbing the... That'll give you a good view of what it looks like. So we're going to take two strings that are close to each other and we're going to continue the heartbeat that we're talking about. The bop, 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 bop. And all you're doing is mimicking the drums at this point or mimicking the rhythm, rhythm with this pick hand. And we're going to take your middle finger and we're going to add a note. try that again. That's a simple exercise. It also happens to be about three licks put together and you can separate those later once you get fluid with it. Let's try it again a little quicker. Now notice I'm vamping this and I'm vamping the string because it sounds more stylistically blues to go and to not have it ringing. And that's why you see my hand vamping here. That, 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 that. So I'm vamping that. Let's try that. I wanted to point to that. I wanted, I wanted to point that out in case you were wondering. So here we go again. same progression can be used, that same little phrase we did can be used in the C chord.
Let's bring this up to D, which is going to be. Now I'm going to go to the fourth string to do the heartbeat or the pulse. So I can go one. Let's try it. You need to. Okay. It's good to rehearse those in the G, the C position, and the D position. But first, just make sure you got it in the G. Let's do another variation of that in G. That's a good way to work your finger. It also happens to be about three licks put together as well. So if you learn it, you can use it and put it and improvise with it. Let's try it again. A little bit of a variation on there, but what we're trying to do is keep the fingers going la that 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 take another variation on the G and let's go down the neck. It's going to be even more simple than what we did. We'll use one finger. type of a of a phrasing for it but I'm keeping the heartbeat so I've showed you four variations with a down the neck variation remember start here with this heartbeat and if you can add in a couple extra notes that's where you're going to end up building from but you need to be able to do this on the third string the fourth string all down strokes no up strokes let's try it on the fourth string I'm adding those notes in on the beat. And all I'm doing is taking a pentatonic scale. I'm just taking a note down a lower octave, but I'm using a heartbeat each time I play that. That's so essential for doing this because you in blues you mix your rhythm with your lead. And so you have to be able to pulse this thing and, and keep it going. It's a good exercise. Take these exercises, go back to your rhythm, and work on these over the rhythm bed of the 12-bar blues. You'll find out that it'll get easier and easier and easier the harder you work at it. Let's take a look from Robert Johnson and show you uh, how he stayed close to his blue scale, but he would only play one or two notes at a time. Very interesting. So here's the, the blue scale. It's a higher octave from what we played earlier. And here's what Robert would have done. He would have used maybe one of his two fingers besides his pick finger, uh, and he would grab other notes along with the first note that he would pick with his pick. Um, and it would be sound something like this. And I'll show you a lick that's an Eric Clapton.